Hey guys, this is Tim for Capes and Scows, and we're going to do another trade review for you, and today we have Rover Red Charlie. Your writer on this one is Garth Ennis, your artist is Michael Dippiscale, you've got your letterer of Kurt Hathaway, and your editor on this one is William Christensen, and your cover artist is Mr. Dippiscale. I hope I'm saying that right, but I'm going to say it that way the whole time. <laughs> Hey everybody, Tim here for Capes and Scouts Podcast, and I'm here to talk about what happens when Garth Ennis gets a little too close to Milo and Otis, and this is Rover Red Charlie. Garth Ennis is known for his sick sensibilities. He is the nut bar that brought you Preacher and most of the weird things in the Punisher universe. So what is the oddball post-apocalyptic yarn about? Zombies? Nuclear war? No. None of that. We never find out what started the violence between the feeders, a.k.a humans. It is assumed a virus or plague, but to the dogs, the feeders just up and went crazy. Three dogs decide to band together and walk across the country and see if the feeders are better on the other side of the pond. Charlie is the rational dog, Red is the dumb dog, and Rover is the snarky British dog. Together, they must figure out if there is an out to this nightmare they find themselves in and protect each other from a new set of obstacles. You have never felt more humanity through three cheeky dogs. Okay, and now it is time to rate Rover Red Charlie from Avatar Comics. We give Ennis a B-plus for his post-apocalyptic dog story. He weaves a good tale, but also, in true Garth Ennis fashion, gets a little more gross than is necessary. The comic is fun and has a satisfying conclusion. It is nice to see Ennis write something other than World War I and World War II stories. The art. Dip scale has a nifty painted style that works great for animals and less so for humans. That being said, the scenery of both city and countryside look great. A major gripe of mine is artists phoning in the backgrounds, which thankfully does not happen here. The animals look great in a painted style. B. Dip scale's colors make his art pop off the page. I don't know if I would want it otherwise. A. Lettering. Hathaway has solid letters, but it doesn't stand out too much above his peers. C+. And finally... For the cover art. The cover art grabs you and makes you want to pick up the book and find out more. The humans look much better on the cover than inside the book, so perhaps there were time constraints. But it's a solid cover. Gets an A. I'm Tim. I can be found at Twitter at mad underscore dog underscore Tim. You can also contact us at Capes and Scowls on Twitter. And you can find our website www.capesandscowlspodcast.com. And you can email us anything you want. Capes and Scowls Podcast at gmail.com. Also, subscribe for more content like this. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.